Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's Thursday, October 14th, 2021. Let's talk about a unique bet for the regular season MVP in the NBA. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now there's a hole, in my opinion, in the posted odds right now. It hasn't factored in the restrictions that have been placed on some players because they will not get vaccinated, right? For the record, I support Kyrie Irving. But let me just say, you take away Kyrie Irving from the Brooklyn Nets, and that changes the dynamic. Now all of a sudden, you have a guy who I consider to be the best player in the league. A guy who averaged 10.8 assists last year. Let me repeat that, last year, he averaged 10.8 assists. Understand, he already was the assist champion for the 2016 to 2017 season. Let's go further. This guy is a seven time All NBA player. This guy, of course, has already won the MVP. This guy, in addition to having double digit assists two different years, <clears throat> is a three time scoring champion. He's going to take over the guard duties full-time for the Brooklyn Nets. Let's talk about his other numbers from last year on the Nets. And we're talking about James Harden, who averaged 24.6 points per game last year. He also averaged 7.9 rebounds a game last year. That's to go with the 10.8 assists. Understand from the free throw line, he hit 86.1% of his free throws. His effective field goal percentage was 54.8%. Right now, the GM of the 76ers, Daryl Morey, Harden's former GM with the Houston Rockets, believes that Harden might be the best offensive player that Maury knows of, right? And trust me, Maury knows of Michael Jordan. Right now, incredibly, this morning, in terms of the odds to win the MVP, given that Harden already averaged over 10 and a half assists last year, and now Kyrie isn't going to be with the team, would it shock you to know that you can get James Harden this morning at 20 to 1 odds to win the MVP? Let me repeat that. James Harden this morning, 20 to 1 odds to win the MVP. Now let's talk about a few things. James Harden got hurt late last year. You might recall him limping around the playoffs, right? Being heroic. But it's clear that James Harden, before the injury, was very much in last year's MVP race, right? Very much in it. You might recall KD missed a lot of regular season games. After all, KD was coming back from an injured Achilles injury. Right, so just understand, at the moment that James Harden got injured, you had well-known sports figures, sports commentators like Tony Kornheiser, who believed that James Harden was the leading candidate to win the MVP. Now, I have no problem with Joker winning the MVP, none whatsoever. Right, Harden got hurt, he was out limping around. But what's astonishing to me, given that Harden's 
a guy who averaged over 24 points last year. In other words, this is your scoring guy passing the ball. What's astonishing to me is that KD right now is getting much shorter odds than his teammate James Harden to win the MVP. Right? Harden again, 20 to 1. Let's convert that to American odds. Plus 2,000. KD, by contrast, is a plus 650. Let me also say, too, that politics plays a role in the MVP voting. I think we understand that it's unlikely that Joker, who's going off at 14 to 1, again, shorter odds than Harden, it's unlikely that Joker is going to be awarded back to back MVPs. Just like I believe that Giannis, now that he's won a title, now that he's no longer an unknown guy, but he's a guy winning MVPs and Defensive Player of the Years, and now a title, I don't think whatever Giannis does, he's going to win the MVP. Another guy, Steph Curry, he's going off at a plus 600. People need to pay attention to the Warriors. I know Curry won the scoring title last year. But understand, you're going to have his splash brother, Clay Thompson, join the team either two or three months into the season. I'm just telling you that that's going to disrupt chemistry a little bit. Let's just say it's not going to be how it was last year. Last year, Curry could look around the court and say, I have the best outside shot. We need some points. I'm going to pull the trigger. You cannot do that with Clay Thompson on the court. Understand, there are times when Clay Thompson is the best shooter on the court by a margin, right? Let's remember the Oklahoma City Thunder were about to close out the Golden State Warriors. Warrior fans know what I'm talking about in a playoff series. The Warriors had one guy hitting on deck that night. Clay Thompson. Thompson carried the team. Right? You bring in a great outside shooter like Thompson, that's going to limit Curry's shot selection. Let me also say, too, that there's another dynamic. You know, Clay Thompson used to be, apart from Draymond Green, the Warriors shut down defender. Well, now he's been out of the game for a couple of years. He's going to come back. Oh, we might not exactly be able to stick the best shooting guard on the other team now. Right? The Warriors are going to have to figure out who they are, and what the assignments are when Klay Thompson comes back. In my opinion, that should knock Curry down a few slots in terms of his ability to win the MVP. Curry has another problem. He's too loved. Right? I know some people are laughing. The bottom line is he's history's only unanimous MVP. He's already won a couple of MVPs. And so you have a problem there, right? Because some voters are going to want to shine a light on other talent in the league. Right? They're going to look at Curry like, in my opinion, they're going to look at Giannis. They're going to say, hey, haven't we celebrated this guy enough? Right? In an earlier generation, people got so tired of Michael Jordan getting awards that when Jordan became the first man to get a triple-double in an NBA All-Star game, they gave the most valuable player for the game to Glenn Rice. But you get too popular and suddenly Karl Malone starts winning MVPs, even though you have the numbers and are the better defensive player. Let's talk about some of these other guys. Great Dane. 
Dame Lillard, right? He's a plus 1,200. Do we even know what team Lillard's playing for? I mean, folks, if you can't figure out where the guy is going to be at the end of the year, the guy's odds of winning the MVP greatly diminish. Right? Trey Young, Atlanta. Okay. Okay. Trey Young has a shot. Right? But, folks, the expectations are different this year, aren't they? Last year, Atlanta seemed to come out of nowhere. Here was Trey Young carrying them. Right, folks? It's 2021 now. We have a different set of expectations for Trey Young. Let me name another guy. He was very much in the race for the MVP last year. Very much in the race. No question about it. Then he got injured. LeBron James. <clears throat> now the problem LeBron has, and I think it is a problem, is LeBron has actively recruited some of his good friends, and some of these guys need the ball, to join him with the Lakers. So, with Russell Westbrook on the team, are there going to be enough balls to go around for LeBron James to be in the MVP running? How about Carmelo Anthony on the team? Keep in mind, Westbrook and Anthony think they're the guys who should get the last shot. Here again, are there going to be enough balls to go around for LeBron James to win the MVP. I think the other problem is just the lack of familiarity that the Lakers have with each other. Right? The Lakers, I know the guys know each other, but it's different now. Right? Westbrook could know Carmelo Anthony, and they're cool. You know, they, they're out, they run into each other at the club. It's like, hey, hey, what's up, player? You know, it's all good. Right? But it's different when you're on the court. Carmelo thinks he's on a roll. Carmelo wants the ball. Russell Westbrook believes he should take the last shot, whatever his three-point shooting percentage. And, of course, I haven't gotten to the often injured man in the room. Anthony Davis. Right? What if Davis wants the ball? I just feel there are too many guys, <laughs> too many guys in L.A. who have averaged over 20 points a game at some point in the past for one guy to have the kind of dominant role that a James Harden is going to have with the Brooklyn Nets. Let's talk about the man who's favored right now to win the MVP, Luka Doncic. Right, folks? Tremendous talent. A real triple-double threat. Right? But, and I understand last year, a guy whose team was not a top seed won the MVP. I get it. But is Dallas the team not the guy, not, not Luca, but the team. Is the team going to be good enough for us to coronate Luca? Because I get the feeling when it comes time for the MVP vote, you're going to have some guys who are older, who we understand might not have a lot of time left. Right, Durant. LeBron James, James Harden, right? We're going to have an older group, Steph Curry, whose teams are going to be hovering, right? If Dallas, the team, doesn't put themselves in an elite position, I get the feeling there's going to be a bias against Luka, right? People want to give career appreciation awards, if James Harden has great numbers and is on a team that has a great regular season record and a high seed for the playoffs, knowing that James Harden's 32, 
I think there are a lot of voters who are going to say, wow, Luca or James Harden. Uh, you know, James has less time left. James might not be back in this position. Luca, of course, will have years of dominance, right? That's the way we always think, right? Dan Marino makes the Super Bowl. The assumption in the 80s was, oh, Dan will be back. I think the bias against the young guy, I think the fact that Dallas is in the West, and it's going to be rough sledding for them, folks. Right? Utah is still Utah. Phoenix just was in an NBA Finals. Denver, who? Folks, look out for them. Aaron Gordon signed a new contract. Right? Michael Porter is back. Of course, they have the MVP. There is a chance that Dallas could be a very good team, very good, and not win 55 games. Well, anyway, this morning, I'm putting some on James Harden at 20 to 1 to win the MVP. I can't believe James Harden, who to me is in a great situation, given the Kyrie Irving banning Right? Harden's in a great situation. I can't believe that Harden is going off above 7-1. to one. That's shocking to me. Finally, let me also say this. Joel Embiid, great season last year. Wasn't that an outlier season? Are you sure that situation in Philly? Right? Ben Simmons is back. Doc Rivers doesn't seem to be a member of the Ben Simmons fan club. Right, Philly, of course, was the top seed. They got bounced. Philly's press, let's just say they are a very passionate group. Philly fans will boo you if they think you're not delivering. Are you sure Joel Embiid is going to be who he was last year? Understand, if he's 90% of who he was, there could be some strains on the 76ers. And Bede, of course, is going off at a plus 700, significantly shorter odds than James Harden. Right? So I think James Harden right here is a screaming buy. Understand, they're going to post the odds to win the regular season MVP throughout a big portion of the season. You're going to have hedging opportunities. Some of these guys are going to have career years. At that point, you can throw some money on them. But I doubt, once the games start, you're ever going to get better odds on James Harden than 20 to 1. I like Harden at these odds. I think he's worth a flyer. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.